to Jurassic Park. If we can't protect the Earth, damn sure we'll avenge it. We're bad guys. It's what we do. It will be their undoing. Surviving. Surviving together is all that matters. I'm not, I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. This is like next level crazy. Hello everyone and welcome to Footage Fanatics. We binge watch what's on the big screen or the television screen at home and we talk about it. Before we get started, let's introduce the panel of Fanatics. I'm Anthony Rodriguez, Assistant GM and Lead Anchor here at MEC Denver's TV newscast, The Met Report. And sitting next to me today is General Manager for KMET Radio, Brandon Stoll. What's up, Brandon? <sighs> Pretty heavy. I'm all right. One month left. I'm all right. In school. Yes. It's crunch time, but now we get 30 minutes just to hang out, talk Walking Dead, and relax. Well, a little bit disappointed, but we'll get yeah. to that. Well, let's, we'll uh, that. before we get to that, let's go ahead and get to the, uh, the box office that was, and obviously the big uh, note on yep. this is the Batman vs Superman. Yeah, they, um, they dropped about 80% is, is what I heard from, from week one to week two, they dropped about 81%. Um, they were still number one uh, at 51.3 million, so they still made quite a bit. I mean, it's not like they only made five million or something like that. Uh, Zootopia came in at number two at 19.3 million. At number three was My Big Fat Greek Wedding um, 2 at 11.2 million. Didn't even know the I, movie I, I was out. I didn't even heard of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> at number four, God's Not Dead 2 Never at 7.6 million. And then Miracles from Heaven was at number five. And then all the way at 10, Deadpool dropped. Um, they were at 3.4 million. So what was the number for Batman vs. Superman? Uh, 51.3. 51.3. So, I mean, it's, it's not it's bad, big drop, but it's just, yeah, it's just how much they, they drop. Well, and I think the story with behind that is everyone went, went, went and saw it once. Mm -hmm. That's all you needed right. to do. Saw it once. I, mean, which, I think they all knew they were going to, everyone was going to see it at least, at least once, but you saw the difference between a movie like Batman vs. Superman and Star Wars. You could see the weekends that continued. Yeah. The numbers kept going because people wanted to see it more times. After this, Everyone was done after seeing it once. Well, it'll be interesting, in, interesting to see Civil War and see yeah. how they do in their second week. Because if they have, you know, 250 to 300 million in the second week, probably have right around 100 million, yeah. I would assume. Probably. So uh, that'll be interesting to see that, that difference between those two movies. Yeah. Well, moving on in the show, the season finale of Walking Dead was last Sunday, and many fans are not too happy with the outcome. Uh, before we get to that, though, Mr. Spoiler, if you please. S P O I L E R S. Spoilers. Ah! All right. Thanks, Mr. Spoiler. Brandon, where do we start? Because there was so much anticipation. We know yeah. how much we were looking forward to this episode, as you guys watched in last week's episode of Footage Fanatics. Such a letdown. And again, we did Mr. Spoiler, so we are definitely going to be spoiling mm -hmm. here. But uh, what a letdown. And obviously, where to start right here is uh, the fact that no one died after all of those yeah. predictions and possibilities. Yep. Nobody bit the bullet, or Lucille, to be more more uh, politically right. politically correct. Thoughts on the episode? Yeah, it wasn't um, it wasn't what I expected from from the episode. It was look. It, here's the thing. It was a good episode. If this was some other time in the season, if it was a second to last episode, if it was a premiere, it was a good episode. But it wasn't a good finale, and, and that's where. People get confused. Well, well, why didn't you like it? You, it was a good episode. Well, yeah, it was. It was a great episode. It just, it wasn't. It just wasn't a finale. It didn't yeah. feel like a finale, and it was the most boring finale I've ever watched. Let's build up to Negan. We'll get more into Negan next right. time. Let's just talk about breakdown pieces that we saw. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest piece, and this was a little bit later in the episode, was Morgan finally killed someone. Yep. Um, Morgan, obviously, Carol was on the ground. She had gotten shot a couple times. She, she was being followed by one of the guys. That was in the group that Carol took out. The big, the, the truck drove up to her, and, and obviously she gunned them all down. The one guy obviously survived. That guy caught up to Carol, shot her a couple times, and he started to walk away. And Carol started to laugh and tease, and said how like you can't walk away from your problems, stuff like that. He started to walk back, was about to gun down Carol. Morgan, right there, looked like he was going to play, try to play savior. Mm -hmm. No pun intended. Trying to play savior there and make sure that she was going to be okay. Gave him the chance, saying you can walk away from this. We've heard that kind of thing from Morgan, like you can walk away from the situation, don't it, don't do any of this. And then he's like, no, start right about before he shot Carol, and Morgan guns him down. And Carol obviously was still like, why did you do this? Let me die. And he goes, it's not your time yet, whatnot. So 
What do you think about Morgan now finally killing someone? Or at least, obviously, since his kind of his, um, what's that phrase, like his resurrection into mm -hmm. this new, you know, belief system that he has. Since then, first time killing someone. Yeah, I, I, like, I like Morgan. Um, a lot of people don't like him. They thought, you know, he was going to get someone from the group killed, which Keanu almost did. Yeah. But I think it's, he's learning you have to do certain things in this world, and you're going to have to kill, especially for for someone that you care about. Mm -hmm. And so it, that finally happened, which was good to see. I don't get where they're going with Carol. Um, I'm, I'm kind of sick of the back and forth. You know, it, it just, it felt like, it just feels like she needs to just die. Yeah. And, you know, and that's what I, I figured she was going to die in this episode. And I, I honestly thought that Morgan was going to let her. Really? Um, I didn't think he would he would kill kill whoever. Well, they, and they almost killed each other. I mean, Carol almost killed Morgan back yeah. at the house when he was uh, holding that uh, the wolf captive, that one yeah. guy. So you thought maybe you know one of them was going to bite the bullet then when they're mm -hmm. going at it, but at it. But yeah, it was it was surprising to see Morgan save her, and then it was surprising to see Carol yeah. not thankful at all. I mean, she wanted to go there. She was laughing mm -hmm. at the guy. She was ready to to bite the bullet. So well, next season will be interesting with those two. I think what we're going to see is a, a really good duo between those oh, two. Yeah. And that's what I'm excited to see. But at the end of that of their scene, they did meet someone, which I'm very excited for. Yeah. Um, in the comics, I I forgot to look it's a their castle name. Castle or something? What it's was it? I don't. I want to say kingdom. I don't kingdom. know if that's what it is or okay. not. But these people are kind of the opposites of the saviors. And from I haven't read the comics. I don't know a ton about them. But I just have that feeling we're going to see a big war in season seven. Here's the thing, and, and again, we'll get more into the Negan aspect of this, but the part I do want to touch on, the, the comparison between this finale, and I don't remember if it was last season or the season before that, but it's this whole, that, it's this whole setup to half of next season is going to be another rescue mission. It's gonna be. Yeah. It's gonna be okay. We know who's captive, and we'll get we'll get more in depth of that portion uh, in the next segment. But it's it's there's a group that's captive, and there's people on the outside that are gonna try and save. I, I don't. We, you know the phrase history repeats itself. In television shows that are of this magnitude, we shouldn't be getting that. And I feel like with this that we're kind of talking about with the the people from the if they're called the kingdom and partnering with Carol and Morgan, it seems like we're getting that. Okay, it's gearing up for another rescue mission, which when everyone was left in that train car a couple seasons back in, uh, what's the city, what was that city's name? Um, uh, term, uh, Terminus. Terminus, it was Terminus, yeah. 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 When they were captured in the train car, wasn't that the cliffhanger at the end of the season? Yeah. It's the same, it's the same thing where like, we're setting up for but a remember, rescue Terminus mission. only lasted one episode. That's true. And this so, one's Negan obviously last. Well, this yeah. one will be, I don't, think, I don't think so. I think this one will be different. I think Negan will, he kills whoever. Yeah. But they will let them go. They'll do the same thing as they did to the, the Hilltop people. They'll say, we're going to let you go back to your home, but whatever you have, you have to give half of it. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see where Morgan and Carol come in with the, king, with the Kingdom people, or whatever their name, because then that's where the war is going to start to happen, and things are going to start to shift, and we're going to see... Rick's group, our group, can, you know, team up with the Kingdom yeah. people and take it to the Saviors because the Saviors have a lot of people. Yeah. And that was a big thing in this episode. They want to say, look, there's a lot of people that they got to deal with. It's not something where Rick's only Rick's group can just take him out. Yeah. It's, it's impossible. Let's, let's continue leading up to those last couple minutes. But yeah, that buildup, it, it was multiple times where we saw the entire group in the RV drive up to a part. Okay, can't work yeah. here. Let's turn around. Go up to another part. Okay, giant group just standing there creepily. Let's turn around. Did this, obviously we know what happened. We'll discuss it, what happened at near the end. But did the buildup of it work for you? The buildup of seeing, okay, that, that way won't work. That way won't work. There's a big group of people there. Got blocking um, the road here. Did that did that need suspense to do it so in? many times. Yeah. It was like it two was, or three times. It felt like it was a 60-minute episode that they just wanted to stretch out to yeah. 90 minutes. Yeah. It's where like, watch 90, all of this for the last right, 10 minutes. Where that <laughs> extra time was to get to 90 minutes, that was just the extra scenes yeah. of them running into the saviors even more. But I mean, it, it wasn't is even a lot of, lot of, wasn't even a lot of good meaningful dialogue. I mean, it was no, kind of, there was. It, it was, was just them of, showing how many people they yeah. actually have, yeah. and then you see them all in the big group at the end. It's like, oh crap, that's a lot of people. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's one of those things where they needed to show that, but it was a little repetitive. Let's go through more of what we learned. Uh, Maggie, we still we didn't we saw her obviously yeah. in pain. She looks like she's. 
the thing is that it kind of puts to bed the possible theory of, you know, if there's a zombie inside of her eating her, I mean, you think it would do it a lot quicker than that? Yeah, I don't, that's, I don't, that's I don't, not happening. Yeah, I don't think that's a theory anymore. I think that's out the window based on what we saw from her. She's mm -hmm. seeming like she's just quietly going to, you know, it looks like she's kind of quietly dying, but um, I don't know. What's, what do you think is going on with her? I mean, now we've seen an episode where she's um, kind of just laying in bed and kind of just, yeah. you know, slowly going. It what's reminds going on? me of what happened with Lori. Yeah. But see, Lori was farther in her pregnancy, though. Yeah, she was, yeah. So, um, I don't know. I, I think we might come down to a situation where having a child in this world just doesn't work, or it's basically... One baby per group. Well, <laughs> well that, or it's, it's just the disease itself doesn't allow just the the mothers who survive. I think that's kind of hmm. what it's what it is is just there's not enough medicine the whatever the disease is doesn't allow them to survive. Well, and this is also a note to the fact that the group just lost their lone doctor. Yeah. What's her I, I we always forget her name, but um the girl who obviously got the arrow mm -hmm. through her head. We lost her and yeah. now there's no one there to help Maggie through whatever she's going through and <laughs> nothing can be more apparent. It was only like what one episode after when Maggie started to feel this, so it's like now what well, do we do? The one doctor's on at the hilltop. Yeah, that's doge. true. And so now what I don't get, and maybe you can answer this, maybe I missed it, but why, how does the saviors know that Rick's group is going to the hilltop? Because obviously mm. they, don't, they don't know that it's Ma Maggie's a reason. So why are they already set up? Well, here's the thing. I'll, maybe this can answer this. Remember back to we first saw the hilltop, the one guy came and, uh, and tried to kill their leader because he was turned, because they captured his brother and said, I'm sorry, I have to do right. this. Maybe they got other people to turn. Maybe the, maybe the whole hilltop is bad, we don't know, but maybe they were like, they offered him a special deal to let him know what's going on with Alexandria. Like, hey, give but us- But how would they know that though? They, because we haven't they, maybe seen they have the, hilltop the hilltop and, and, and Rick's group in contact since. Um, we haven't had, there's no people from the hilltop that are in the group at all. There's nothing. No. That's true. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's something. That's, I'm not sure. that's what I was confused with because how do they know? Yeah. How, how do they, how do they know? And now it's easy to know which way they're going to go. Cause there's on, only so many ways you can go, but I mean, how do they, obviously, good point. you know, you can say, well, Rick's group is trying to save, you know, Daryl and Glenn and all of them. They didn't even know they were captured. Yeah. Yeah, they saw they, they when they, both when they saw him come out of the, the both trailer surprised. or whatever. Yeah, they were shocked. Yeah. So there's no there was no explanation to why saviors the saviors knew that they were coming. Now it's a little it's a small hole in, in the story. I mean, it's not a big deal, but I was confused about that. Yeah. But other I, than that, I mean, it was it was a good episode. It just didn't feel like that. yeah and again we're, we'll get into the Negan stuff coming soon. I'm trying to think of other stuff we learned from this episode I mean there, well, that's any, the any thing. questions there that weren't any there, there, yeah, wasn't. there was it was the really the big things were were Carol and Morgan introducing not completely but introducing the fact that they may be going towards the kingdom people or whatever they're called but that, that's only for comic book or for people who know what happens in the comic book so then it's okay people who haven't watched or have, don't know what happens in the comic book, now they're confused on who those people are, which is fine. Um, you know the funny thing about this episode? We barely saw any zombies. We saw, yeah. I think, just the line mm -hmm. of zombies, the, the, the line that mm -hmm. uh, the, the saviors made of all of them, that's it. Well, <laughs> that's the thing, you know, and this, this, it, it, this, depends this on, it depends on who you are and what you want from them, but do you want The Walking Dead to go more towards humans versus humans, or do you still want the walkers to be a big threat? The walkers should be a big threat, but as we've kind of noticed that overriding theme is they're not the biggest threat though. Well, the people, he, the, he, the, the people, people that are, are still alive, are your zombies threat. aren't a threat to them anymore because they've killed so many, it's they like, know how to deal like with nothing. them. It's like nothing, it's like chopping exactly. up. Well, and, and Eugene, when they saw meat. the line, right? Yeah. Of, of people, Eugene had to say, they had to have a lot of people, and not only that, but they had to be skilled and they had to know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. To get that line perfectly how they wanted it. And so we saw that they have enough to do something like that. Right. Skilled so anyone who's alive knows how to deal with the zombies unless they're part of Alexandria where yeah. they were sheltered. But other than that, everyone knows. So it's turning into it's humans versus humans, but how long can that last? Yeah, I don't know. We're gonna take a quick break here on Footage Fanatics. When we come back, we'll get into everything about Negan and all about the last couple minutes in the show. So don't miss it. We'll be right back. 
Watch our Spanish news get noticiero TV every Friday at 10:30 a.m. Sports, entertainment, weather, events, all you need to know about our school, our region, and our world. On Comcast Channel 54 in Denver and Channel 20 on campus. Noticiero TV Met, the student's voice of MSU Denver in Spanish. Watch our Spanish news get noticiero TV Med every Friday at 10:30 a.m. Sports, entertainment, weather, events, all you need to know about our school, our region, and our world. On Comcast Channel 54 in Denver and Channel 20 on campus. Noticiero TV Med, the student's voice of MSU Denver in Spanish. Welcome back to Footage Fanatics. We're still breaking down the Walking Dead season finale, and now we are going to discuss what everyone's talking about the last 10 minutes of the show. Negan is here. Thoughts on, we'll get to the discussion about mm -hmm. what didn't happen, that should have happened, right. but Negan, overall reaction on how the build up to him, and then were you surprised in how great he was? Yeah, the build up was great. And that's part of the problem of this episode, because the build up was so good that nothing happened. Yeah. And and that's, that's the biggest issue for me is you have all this buildup and we finally see him, but it's just, it, just, it fell dropped. short. Yeah, it fell short and it wasn't, it wasn't enough, but he was great and he's perfect as, as Negan. I, I forgot his name, Morgan, or is his name Morgan? Who? The actor. Or it's, oh, what's, I, what's, forget, I forget. I forget. I can't remember his name. He's Negan um, now, yeah. forever. Yeah, and yeah. He, he's great. He's, it's perfect, Lucille. The whole bat thing looks looks great. Uh, his scene was a bit long. A bit long. It was a bit long, but everything that he said, it was intense. It looked good. Um, that whole time, 
you know, my heart was beating. Oh yeah. You know, that Racing. whole entire time. So the, he did a great job as far as all of that. But again, like I said, it falls short at the end. But other than that, I can't wait for next season because yeah. he's, go he's going to be perfect as, as Negan and it's going to be an all out war. And we haven't seen that in The Walking Dead. You know, society is pretty much starting over. We're starting completely over in their new world and there's going to be war. There's going to be big groups. There's going to be people who hate each other. There's going to be trading. There's going to be all those things. And we're kind of getting into that now after probably a year or two yeah. after the actual apocalypse? I think the biggest overlying part about that entire scene is that for the longest time, even though it's been thrown in flux mo several times, Rick is no longer the top dog, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Negan is now the man in charge, and by far. I mean, this dude, this dude is terrifying. Mm -hmm. He, he, he is allowed to have this humor, and again, credit to, the, I always forget the, I forgot the actor's name, but credit to him for allowing to be funny, but also to be absolutely terrifying. And the governor, not, not think, a close. thing of the past. Not even a thing of the past. Yeah. Th this guy, they, they got a top-notch guy for this, this role. Um, but yeah, I think the biggest part of me is just the, just the complete shutdown on Rick's face. Mm -hmm. no, no, nothing there. He is just mouth open, jaw dropped to the ground, doesn't know, even know what to say because he has walked his family, essentially, into hell. He has walked his family into hell. And, and you could tell, I was, I was watching Twitter through it a little bit too, and people were discussing, it's like, you know you're in trouble when you're making promises that we're, everything's gonna be okay, and you're walking people into things you're not aware of what's gonna happen, and then, I'm all, then they're all sat down in that semi-circle and waiting for Negan to come out of an, the RV, and everything is just out of the entire hands of the people of Alexandria. There is nothing up to them at that point. It is all up to what, Negan could have killed them all right there and ended it all. It was all up to Negan, all up to the saviors, and that's the most terrifying thing I think this group has faced is there was nothing they could do about anything in that final scene, nothing. It was yeah. all up to them. Well, and I think the biggest part of it too was how much people the saviors actually it's have people. and that Negan is in control of all of them. And, and that's kind of the thing where he, where Rick was shocked, where, where I thought why he was shocked was because there was so many people. It's not like one of those situations at Terminus where they can rush out and yeah. they can kill everyone. They'll, they'll escape. Well, they can't do that. One well, early thing, remember a couple episodes ago when Daryl offered to like, hey, we'll go take out Negan, we'll do this. It's like, they think he was right. just a nonchalant, same old thing they've dealt with, oh, we've done this before mm -hmm. kind of thing. No, this is a different ball game. This is, this is an ace. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy you don't mess think with, now they know. Think about how many people they killed in the bunker, and now all of a sudden, you still see all of those people. Oh, yeah. That was a, a little blip that, on the radar. Exactly. It's nothing. And so... They th and they thought they probably... They thought they delivered a big hit. Yeah. And they didn't do right. anything close to that. They thought, like, oh, we nothing. took the bunker, we took a whole bunch of their people, this is all they've got. Not even close. Yeah. This is... They've dealt with little battles, little, little groups of people. Right. This is an army. This is an army. I think it's the first army they dealt with. I mean, the governor, obviously, at his place, had a pretty big group, but yeah. nothing in comparison to this. And that's why you felt that false, what well, we found out was false confidence from Rick and his group, because we thought that, okay, or you know, they thought it was going to be the same old thing that they've dealt with, and they hadn't been into this situation before. They've been, the thing is, is they've been through so much, they had, they had that confidence deserved but now that they are aware of what they've really got the themselves into, the world's a whole lot bigger and a whole lot of that world are saviors. Yeah. We could see there's so many people there and it's just, you felt that feeling with them. That's why that, final, that, that last 10 minutes was so well done up until obviously the end because you felt that feeling with them. You felt that the helplessness and the, and the surprise of, oh my gosh, we've taken this way too lightly. This isn't like any situation we face. And that's what's one of the most terrifying things because we were along for the ride, just like Rick's group was. Yep. Now it'll be interesting to see what they do with the next group. Yeah. The group, the group that's going to help Rick's, our group pretty much. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad they introduced them because mm -hmm. if they wouldn't have introduced the, the kingdom people, then you'd be like, well, this is going to be impossible for, for Rick's group. Yeah. How are they going to get out of this? At least now you know that there's some type of hope. But again, I mean, there's, it's, it, it doesn't matter because yeah. they, we are going to lose someone. It's unfortunate we don't know who that is, but we are going to lose someone. And I, I mean... The fun thing about this episode, I'll say, and I saw this on Twitter, is someone said on Twitter, 
The Walking Dead had the chance to pull off their own red wedding. And if you watch Game of Thrones, you understand that, that concept. If you don't watch Game of Thrones, first off, uh, posters right here. Uh, it, they, they had the chance to have their own red wedding, but the part that even more, even more Game of Thrones like is that we're all now we're, we're going to see these different clans, these different groups. Like the mm -hmm. world is so much bigger. It isn't just it isn't just Rick's group versus one group. There's going to be multiple groups from here on out. There are multiple venues to get held, multiple uh, multiple enemies. Like that's even more so what's Game of Thronesy. I that's why I like a lot about this is because there's so many different things. Now the the issue with that is is you got to wonder can Walking Dead take on that much in right. one season. And that's the issue is gonna be, is there gonna be too much substance to put out in one season? Is everything gonna be stretched a little bit too thin? Because while we got all these separate groups that are gonna play, it could be a contributing factor now into what we're seeing, that's how we gotta see how they handle it. And judging by how they mishandled that last couple of minutes, I'm not trusting that crew with handling anything right now, very much. You know, they've been great, that was a great season, but to drop the ball like that's really gotta make you question yeah. the decision making on so far this on this crew. Yeah, I mean, given it's been a couple days, to kind of think about the Still cliffhanger. Great. Obviously, but. look, they didn't show who died. Negan killed someone. But my problem was that we, they basically spoiled the whole ending to us the week before with all of the commercials and the promos and, and the trailers and everything. In the trailer, it says someone's gonna pay the price. Yeah. You know, in the trailer, you see Negan standing over someone pretty much with Lucille look, looking like he, has one person in front of him that he's gonna kill him from the whole group. Yeah. That's what it looked like. So obviously it didn't turn out to be like that, but you still got the idea of he's going to kill someone. And he did, but they didn't show who it was. So it felt like I got the whole ending spoiled to me weeks before because I already knew that he was gonna kill someone. Yeah, spoiling things, huh? <clears throat> Batman or Superman. Uh, well, here's a big question. Who bit the bullet? Who'd he get? Who'd he kill? I'm, I'm sticking with Glenn. Okay. I'm sticking with Glenn because to me, if it's not Glenn or Daryl, or even, or even Carl, which it won't be because he said, if anyone, that if if anyone, anyone tops or anyone does the right, emotions, his, cut out, yeah. take his eye out, feed it to his dad. That's so, so messed up. <laughs> Negan that, is that one line, bad though, guy. That line, though, was great. It, it was said, like, not straight face, but like, did, it's almost like, did you really just say that? Right. Like, what? Can, what? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, so I think it, it, it has to be either Glenn or Daryl. Yeah. Now, what people are saying, well, it can't be Glenn because he was freaking out and he said, well, you're taking like a champ. He says that exact line in the comics and he kills Glenn in the comics. Mm. So now look, I, they don't have to follow everything that happens in the comics, they haven't done so. A Abraham is technically supposed to be dead. Um, Andrea is supposed to be alive. Well, there's all these things, but I do think it's Glenn because this big of a scene this big of a death that happens in the comics where it happened in the 100th issue of the comics, that just how big it, of a story it is, it just, to me, it has to be Glenn and you have to stick to this storyline. Like Carl getting his eye shot out. Yeah. It's like, it's such a big part of the story of The Walking Dead that I feel like it, they have to kill Glenn. I think it's Daryl. I think here's the thing. Yeah. When Glenn came out, when he when he came out and cried because obviously Maggie was you know let's nice put Maggie out of her misery, and whatnot. Yeah. He went out and he's like, no 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 no, get back in line. So right. then go back and then choose him. It, it feels weird to me now again with a questionable decision making. He did I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Mo, he did. He did. It but is random. I, I think I think Daryl's gonna bite the bullet. First of all, if Negan knows all these things, by the way, he has to know who took out his crew. And that guy in Daryl took out yeah. a lot of his crew. He's got to make Daryl pay. He talked about he gave the overriding but themes again, of someone's got to pay. I know he did the choosing thing, but you could do. He, you see how we're randomly he picked around. He could, that, really, he could pick whoever he talking wants. Dead, they said they did that on purpose, though. He was <laughs> going in. He was going in order. But I think he picked the I thing with, with Daryl real quick is that the walk, Daryl's not in the comics. The Walking Dead people who do the TV show, they AMC, they like having Daryl because they can do whatever they want with Daryl because mm. he's not in the comics. He's a wild card. He's, he's a wild Joker. card. That's why I don't think it's there anymore. I think it is Glenn. Let's we'll see. Well, now we got to wait. What? Six months? Yes, six months. We have Talking Dead coming up, which we'll get. We'll get. We'll get to uh, talk about. Or not Talking Dead. Uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get to talk about that. About it, it, they. They preview it pretty well. Yeah, the stuff with yeah, the, uh, the, stuff with the stuff it's with just, the flight stuff they've done. So that big of a cliffhanger sucks. It does. So. Well, it's come time to end this week's episode of Footage Fanatics. Make sure you subscribe to YouTube Footage Fanatics. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Footage Fanatics. Follow us on Twitter at Footage Fanatics. And of course, head on over to footagefanatics.com. See you next time.